well, sept into every corner of would life. You, would you say that the core, one of the core tenets of feminism is the patriarchy theory? That seems, um, I mean, in, in mainstream feminist academia, they teach patriarchy theory. Sure. Do you think uh, teaching about like racial oppression is uh, hatred against white people? I guess well, I'm not seeing why doing gender studies. Focused. No, I know. I'm saying I let's don't think teaching on... gender studies is hatred towards men. Well, he, here's, here's how I think it is, is because if your, your core message that you're preaching is patriarchy and patriarchy theory and you're teaching vast swaths of women that men are oppressors and that women are oppressed, then you are essentially te teaching women to have contempt for men. Because if you're pitting men and women in this war that, again, if men are the oppressors and women are the oppressed, typically you don't teach someone who is oppressed to have any positive feelings towards the oppressor class. Now, I reject that men as a class are oppressors. I see it in the language. I always thought this was interesting. It's like because of feminist movements, we generally don't say even firemen or postmen, it's like fire persons. We don't say stewardess anymore. Like there's a lot of language policing with respect to that movement. But the movement for equality between the genders is called feminism. And the Good point. antagonist towards that process is the patriarchy. I just think that's really interesting. It should just be egalitarianism. But it's feminine, and it's interesting, you, you make a really good point because there's this push, okay, we can't have policemen, fire, firemen anymore, it has to be firefighters. But in the, the very movement itself, it's gendered, feminism. The supposed movement for equality is gendered. And, and the main obstacle towards that equality is gendered. I don't know how we got to that, by the way. What? Hmm? Why are you, are you staring daggers at me? I'm, That's your smoking gun that the word feminism has fem in it? Like, it's not my, well, I mean, it's, it's that's inherently one of the, anti-male. Yeah. But well, it's more just, I, that's not my biggest grievance with feminism, but it, it is interesting to me that a lot of feminists push for renaming certain occupations so they're more gender neutral. However, the supposed movement that is at the forefront of fighting for equality continues to call itself feminism when it should just be egalitarianism. I guess it's semantics. I don't think, well, I don't think it's semantics because feminism is an ide ideology that's basically steeped in man, man hatred. I don't know, I don't see it that way, but feminism is super broad. I'm sure there's, like I said, there are a lot of feminists who genuinely Well, do if, hate if men. you step into a, like a feminist, feminism 101 class at any university in this country, they're going to teach patriarchy theory, which suggests that women are and were oppressed and that men are to be blamed for that by virtue of their gender. Yeah, those classes aren't teaching you to hate the male electrician. They're saying that people who occupy positions of power have tended to. Can you just tilt your microphone down? They aren't teaching women to hate like the male electrician or like male homeless people. They're saying patriarchy theory is that saying people who hold positions of power have tended to be male and they continue to tend to be male. This so is feminism attacked positions of positions of power, including husbands and fathers, their position of power and authority in the home. So it's. It's attacking everything from the foundation. Yeah, and it's, which it's is done a, a lot. I think the fact that now you know it's considered rape if you. Oh, sorry. If it's it's considered grape if you, grape your wife. That's a product of feminism. That's. Would you consider that also being male hatred? I'm not sure. What I was the question? What's the question? Follow. Um, that's a feminist thing that happened before. It wasn't considered grape if a man graped his wife. It, it was just considered like a part of your marriage. So when feminists were the ones who pushed for that, or that's part of feminism, do you consider that m hatred of men? That's actually why, true. Well, that came out, and I the think, in the 60s is great. and 70s. You know I mean? And I think the argument for that was that there's sort of a lifelong consent when you well, take okay. marriage if, if, if one of, just point blank period, if someone is not, not consenting, and, like that's wrong. Point blank period. I don't care if you're married, if, one partner is not consenting to sexual activity. But then, they considered the consent implied. Like our dialogue of consent is getting pushed by feminists in these so-called man-hating spaces. 
I, they what, considered the consent assumed. In feminist spaces? Or you, you mean like Like you're saying that lack of consent is always bad, but I'm saying yes. they would consider just the fact that you got married well, they're, they're then all, the sex is consensual within that institution of marriage. Like the definition <coughs> of consent changes with the times and the, the cultural scene. That's not like the root or the. Is this like a gotcha or something? I mean, like. How is it a gotcha? I'm saying you gave. You were talking about consent, and I was saying they would have probably well, said you, that that's you still brought, consensual. I mean, you brought up that question. What question? I mean, this is the this. That's the one example you brought up of in the past, consent was assumed, and look, there were all kinds of shitty, uh, shitty uh, ways in which people. Uh, moved throughout the world historically. Right, but I'm there just saying slavery, when, when for feminists example. were looking out for wives in that instance, you wouldn't consider it that being hatred towards I'm not, men. Well, well, hold on. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that every single thing that feminists have done or, or have fought for are bad things. I believe in equality between the genders. I think but, this is because feminism has evolved a great deal. But I mean, de I mean, if the example you're giving certainly disavow if if one part, regardless of their uh, marital status, if one person is non-consenting, then that, yeah, that's that's pretty bad. Right, but even today, feminists will say in the Me Too movement, like a lot of consent isn't being respected. But then some men will say, oh, they're just manhandling feminists. They want to call us all grapists. So I'm saying it's the same conversation, just in a new era. Well, I mean, that's one component of feminism. But I don't see how that's question? really related. Yeah, I don't know if that, how that's super related. I mean, I, I know that, for example, that sort of violence is, is you know, perhaps something that disproportionately impacts women. Mm -hmm. um, so it is gendered to some degree, but I mean, there's all kinds of examples. If we can bring it, though, back to the patriarchy, um, I just, I don't, know, I don't even re really remember where we, <laughs> where okay. we were kind of going. But if topic. it makes you feel better, under the patriarchy, you know, before feminism, rape and murder were already illegal and punished by the patriarchy, by men. Men punished men who did those awful acts. I just wanted to say that I believe that men and women are, are very important in today's society. I, and I have a very um, opposing opinion, and I would believe that men are in some ways even more um, capable of some things. That's what I believe uh, it says in the Bible. I know it's very controversial, um, but that's, that's what I believe. I think men and women are obviously very capable and very strong um, in a lot of aspects, but I think men do have certain abilities that maybe women don't. Okay. Oh, I think it was because of the electrician super chat that came in. Well, let's get this one. We have Speedy the Unsilent. Thank you, man. Trying to find a decent woman, the country with no history of Promiscuity is basically impossible. As a man who has never had hookups of any kind, I will not accept a woman's past of hookup and promiscuity. It's all a mess. Speedy the Unsilent, thank you for your uh, donation, man. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, good for you, man. Uh, you, everyone's entitled to their preferences, standards, and boundaries, and you should not feel obliged to accept someone's past promiscuity. Um, okay, so. Uh, I'm trying to remember where we were. You were telling us about your slashed story, or you didn't slash, anyone here slashed any tires? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> back to that. Oh, we were talking about marriage. Okay, let me get back to marriage really quick. I wanted to touch on that really quick. Okay, so look, my whole thing is, is you should never sign a contract with someone who is rewarded for breaking it. So no sane informed man would or should sign that contract. Tegan, did you have something? Yes, I think the only difference between what you're saying and actual marriage is just the concept that like if you're in marriage you're less likely to want to give up on that relationship because of the money issues if that's what you're saying you know so what I'm so what you're saying is marriage is two people staying together under threat of a lawsuit from the other i mean that's also kind of why sounds like you're love to it, me isn't it huh isn't that also kind of why you well that's why I, that's why i'm against it but your argument is well because of the financial ramifications they're more likely to stick it out, but what I'm saying well, that, I'm not that's saying like, it's an argument. I'm just saying that's kind of sure. a, another way to look at it. So sure, I think but it's kind of just like if if someone believes that marriage is what it takes to be committed to someone, then they're going to do that. If not, then they don't have to get married. You know? Yeah, what but I, mean? I, I don't think the basis for my commitment should be my fear of losing half my assets. I think it's I, I should I want to stay with somebody because I love them and I 
you know. Well, of course, yeah. Not because I'm not not because of fear, um, and but here's the thing though. Usually in marriage, it's the man that loses in that situation when the divorce does occur. Right. The negative outcomes of divorce disproportionately impact men. That's why I wanted to. Can I finish my thought earlier? Yeah, go ahead. Um, like I said, my husband and I have gone through rough patches where we didn't think we would stay married. Um, for me, what changed my heart and my mind was understanding that we made a blood covenant. It's not some weird, freaky witchcraft type of thing. It's literally something humans have been doing forever. So, like I said, he was a virgin. I was a virgin when we got married. And obviously, when you have sex, um, you know, there is blood because you're a virgin and when i understood that we made a pact and a covenant in blood i knew that even if i couldn't stand him i hated him i wanted to leave him he's my husband no matter what i do no matter where i go if i separate no matter what i do he's my husband and i'm you know his wife and if i slept with another man i'm committing adultery before god because i've made that pact with him and like I said, this is something that people have been doing since the beginning of time, um, in wars, um, in you know, even religious settings. And in the Old Testament, for this to make sense to people, and especially Christians, in the Old Testament, when the Israelites, Israelites sinned, they sacrificed animals, and that was their offering, and that blood spilt was the way that their, their sins could be forgiven. And then in the New Testament, it wasn't animals, it was Jesus Christ that was sacrificed and his blood was spilled so that whoever believes in him would be saved and their sins would be forgiven. So blood covenant is the most powerful type of covenant you could make. And as Christians, you know, you understand that in the, you see it in the Old Testament, you see it in the New Testament, and when you get married, you are making that pact. If you're both virgins, you made that pact. If you're not and you have a history, that pact is made in the blood of Christ. And like I said, I don't believe in born-again virgins, as in you're biologically a virgin again, your hymen is intact again when you gave your life to Christ. No, it's not. But the blood of Christ forgives you, and you made that covenant with your husband regardless of your past. You made that pact and that covenant in Christ. Does that make sense? So I'm saying all that to say look, I'm not, I don't condemn anybody with a past because, like I said, our society is so screwed up. We're 60 years past the sexual revolution. We have a lot of work to do here. But I'm just sharing my perspective that I don't view my marriage based on, you know, our ceremony, our wedding day, or even our wedding ring, or our paperwork that we sign at the government one time for like 30 minutes at their office. We're married because I made a blood covenant with him. And there's no separating that. There's no, what God put together, let no man separate it. And there's no divorce for me. There's no separating for me. There's no adultery for me because I gave my life to him. And I'm creating life with him. We have five children, and we're going to have grandchildren. And this is a long-term, lifelong thing. And not just that, it's a generational thing. And so it's not just a religious you know, pact. It's even a biological, a scientific pact. And I wish that we could you know, slowly get back to that understanding. And even though we have mistakes and we've done things wrong, we could teach the next generation to do it better than we do. And just in the same way that the sexual revolution screwed us up, we can go back. They taught us, you know, sexual revolution and feminism and all of that taught us that this is the way to go about life, is to sleep around. Well, we can be the change. We can tell the next generation, starting from right now, 2023, this is how you do life. I've done it the other way, and it hurt, and it messed us up. We have so much divorce. We have so much abortion. We have so many, you know, just people just sleeping around, and we don't know how to love each other. We don't even know how to talk to each other as men and women. And we see the fruit of all of that. And we can be the change and say, this is not how you do it, son. This is not how you do it, daughter. You can be the change. I've tasted the fruit of the sexual revolution, of hookup culture, of this degeneracy. And I don't want you to taste it. I want you to do better than me. And that's what we get to do as you know, husband and wife, as mother and father. And that's what Lawson and I get to do. That's my husband. That's what we get to do for our children. And then they get to teach their children. And honestly, it feels so helpless because the world is so messed up, but it's not helpless. In the same way that they screwed us up, we can change it. We can change the, direct, the, we can change the direction that it's going. And we can change the re re 
sorry, <laughs> we can change the rhetoric. Does that make sense? You can change it. You see the fruit of it. You don't like it. Be the change. That was moving. <laughs> well said. Well said. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Wow. Um, we all have. I'm not, I'm not like saying, oh, I'm a virgin. I got married when I was, you know, young and I was a virgin. Like, I don't have any self righteousness in myself. The only righteousness I have is in Christ. So I'm not better than any of you. Yeah. Well, I, and so I, it's just that we need Jesus and we need to change things and we need sure. better for our children. Does that make sense? Sure. And I, I appreciate you opening up about that. I mean, just going back, though, to, um, you know, you mentioned blood covenant and, and religion and Jesus. Um, I, I mean, the, the problem with all that, though, when it comes to marriage and, and this your train of conversation there started off kind of because I brought it back to marriage is that what people who are trad cons, traditional conservatives, is they fail to realize that the state provide, uh, excuse me, you fail to realize that the state presides over your marriage, not your biblical values. So when the woman is unhappy, she's going to the state, not God. So even women who are godly and pious, even if you're a man and you're godly and pious, it is not a bulletproof path towards an everlasting marriage that is never subject to the negative ramifications of divorce. And even without the paperwork, women can leave, right? If they're just not happy, if the marriage is not healthy, they can just leave whether or not the man has any money for her to get from the divorce. So the problem is just that men and women, wives and husbands need to understand each other. And thankfully, my husband and I stayed together because we learned the truth and we learned how to work through our problems and we didn't divorce. And that's the whole reason why we do any of this stuff online, you know, coaching and all of that is because we learned some things the hard way and we want to pass on what we learned because it saved our marriage. Does that make sense? Well, and I, I mean, first off, I obviously want to congratulate you because it sounds like you have a good marriage and I'm not saying that people can't have good marriages. Um, I, I guess just my whole thing is, is that as a guy, it's, it's not it's a, a risk. I, yeah. it's, a, it's a risk. And, you know, um, I think Orion was making a really, really good point here is, you know, when the financial incentives are there for women to pursue a divorce, it, it could be like, you know, it, it looks very tempting to just be like, you know what, I can get all this money. I'm kind of, we're arguing blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let me just leave. I can get this money. If, if there's, if you put in front of somebody, Hmm. Okay. I can get paid $50,000 a year. Let's say your, your man's a high earner. He's going to pay some certain alimony payment. We've heard of astronomical alimony payments in the six figures, seven figures, eight figures. Um, I perhaps, you know, look. Well, I guess one of my points here is that this is a, a really high bar and we don't see this in relationships in society very often. Like what jobs do people that exist in the world where like no matter what, you cannot be removed from that position? Like p Pope, like Supreme Court justice, like, mm -hmm. And, and, and those folks are vetted over decades of a career. And I'd like to think that what we've seen throughout most of human history is that when we give people a place where under no circumstances they can be removed, we see a tendency towards abuse. Well, the Bible says that if there is adultery, it's grounds for divorce. If there's abuse and you're physically like endangered, like you're in a life or death situation, you should separate. You know what I mean? And if it's not worked out, then yeah, I mean, but most people divorce before those things happen. And I think if women felt like loved or whatever, and men felt respected in their marriage, they wouldn't get divorced. So it's not the money that wives are after. I don't believe that. I believe that they're seeking emotional, relational, intimacy and the problem is across the board wives and husbands are the problem wives and husbands can be the solution well i would i would i agree with you to a certain extent i think that if if a man feels respect and a woman feels loved they're not going to leave the relationship but that doesn't necessarily mean just because they feel loved or respected that they should get married well, which why bring, not 
Well, because, again, why? Like, why is it that women catch the bouquet at weddings? So they could get married next, right? Exactly. Why isn't there anything equivalent about that for men? Ever. Because it's different it's, for men. Exactly. And men don't, truly, men don't have to get married. It's more about a girl. Like, even exactly. in my culture. Exactly. Marriage like, is about security in for Hinduism, women. Hinduism. That's right. No. Culture. Marriage. Like, Indians, like, even with that, it's kind of similar to this, where it's like, once you get the arranged marriage, like, your parents set you up. And this is not even, like, that long ago. But, like, even my parents, like, they had no choice. Like, they were, like, set up. And it was, like, a done deal. 